Once, a prison guard accidentally overheard very disturbing rumors. Someone was planning a prison break. The guard watched all the footage from the surveillance cameras and discovered that two women had been behaving suspiciously. One of them was a former bodybuilder, muscular, with short hair, and covered in tattoos. The other was quiet and reserved. She preferred to spend time on her own and sometimes cried in her cell. After watching the video several times, the guard figured out which woman was planning to escape. Can you do the same? It's the second prisoner. There's a file in her bun. She can use it to get through the metal bars. Mark comes up to the table. There are three apples, but only one of them is safe to eat. The other two are poisonous. Unfortunately, Mark can't skip breakfast. So, which apple should he eat? Look, this apple has a caterpillar in it. It means there's no poison in the fruit, and it's safe to eat. These three women, Jessica, Mary, and Olivia, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is just trying to steal a watermelon. Can you tell which one is hiding a watermelon? It's Olivia. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes a pregnant woman would choose to wear. Nathan, a successful entrepreneur with a multi-million dollar business, and his friend Jackson, a famous private detective, returned from a long-term trip abroad. They decided to stop by at Nathan's villa on the way to the city. When the men entered the house, though, they saw that everything more or less valuable had been taken away. The entire villa was a mess. I've only been away for a month! What happened here? exclaimed Nathan. Jackson took an apple from the dining room table and started to munch on it thoroughly. The lock isn't broken. It means the person who took your stuff had the key. After a while, the detective asked Nathan to invite three people. Mia, Nathan's niece, told Jackson she hadn't visited her uncle's home. She had been having serious problems with her car for already two months. And the villa was too far away from the city to get there by public transport. Sarah, the maid, claimed that she had stopped by several weeks ago to bring some food and tidy up. But since then, she hadn't been to the villa. Adam, the gardener, told the detective he had been on vacation and had just returned. He even offered to show his plane tickets to Jackson. The detective figured out immediately who was behind the mess. You have 8 seconds to figure it out. It was the maid. She said she brought food several weeks ago. But the apple Jackson grabbed from the table was perfectly fresh. Once, Ms. White heard someone crying. It was her little student, Abigail. The girl told the teacher her cookies had been disappearing from her locker. Someone had been taking them for already several weeks. But Abigail didn't know who. Ms. White decided to help the girl. They equipped the locker with a simple alarm that had to go off if someone who wasn't Abigail opened the door. They hid behind the corner and began waiting. In 10 minutes, they heard the alarm. When they reached the locker, it was already empty, and there was no one nearby. But Ms. White noticed somebody disappear behind the art room door. She rushed inside, but everything looked normal. And still, the teacher needed no more than a minute to understand who had been eating Abigail's cookies. Look at the picture of the art room carefully. Can you find out the answer within 8 seconds? It's the girl on the left. Her painting's black and white, but there are only various shades of blue on her palette. And maybe the cookie crumbs are a giveaway too. I don't know. One perfume company hires new staff. They must swear an oath of loyalty to the company if they want to get a job. Ten people are saying the words of the corporate oath simultaneously. But some of them are cheating. Help the directors figure out who these people are.
This guy keeps his fingers crossed. And the man on the left is standing with his legs crossed. They won't be loyal to the company, so the director doesn't hire them. Two influential media moguls are having lunch at an expensive restaurant. They're discussing the merger of their companies. The transaction amount is several billion dollars. They're whispering since the terms of this deal are top secret, and they suspect that someone can hear them. And they're right. Some curious people are eavesdropping on the conversation between the two businessmen. Try to find them. The girl at the next table is reading a newspaper that is turned upside down. She's obviously trying to overhear what the billionaires are talking about. This guy over there is listening to music, but the headphone wire is not connected to anything. Another girl is sitting at the table in the corner with a cocktail. But instead of an umbrella, there's an antenna in her glass. She's recording the conversation. Where are my employees? A boss shouts. He's furious because three people haven't come to the office. He calls each of them to find out the reason. All three tell him they got ill. The boss doesn't believe them, so they have to arrive at the office. Mary is wearing a warm jacket, hat, and scarf. She sneezes, coughs, and looks sick. Lori is walking on crutches. Her leg is in a cast. Sometime later, Michael appears. He's got a hand injury, and now he can't type. The boss is sure that one of them is faking. Who is it? Mike's left arm is broken, but his phone is in his left pocket. He must have used his broken arm to put it there, which means he's pretending. Apparently, he just didn't want to come to work. Ice will melt if you heat it. But if you heat me, I'll become solid. What am I? I'm an egg. You buy this thing to eat, but you never eat it. What is it? It's a plate. Mia was going back home one evening. It was 11 p.m., and she had to cross a small dark park in front of her house. Suddenly, she heard footsteps behind. Someone grabbed her bag and ran away. The girl called the police, and they questioned four suspects. Jack said, I was choosing an outfit for a party. Camilla was getting ready for her final exam at home. Andrew told the police he had been watching birds in the park. Nora was at her yoga class. After the interview, the police understood who was behind the robbery. Can you? It was Andrew. At 11 p.m., it's too dark to see birds. James left a folder with important documents on the table in his home office and went to a business meeting. When he returned, he found out that the documents had disappeared. James had three suspects. His brother said, I've been swimming in the pool since you left. I haven't seen or heard anything. The cook replied, Tomorrow we're having a party. I've been preparing the food. The security guard told James, I've been outside all this time, checking the garden for mice. Who knows where the documents are? It's the security guard. His job description doesn't include pest control. An accident happened at a busy crossroads in a small town. A driver who caused the crash left in a hurry. Luckily, several witnesses managed to describe the car. A police officer headed to the suspect's house. There, he saw a car that looked exactly like the one from the description. But its owner claimed that he had spent all day at home. The police officer knew the suspect was lying in no time. How? He touched the car hood. It was still hot from the engine that had worked not so long ago. 
You're walking along a railroad track. Suddenly, you see a speedy train approaching you. Instead of getting off the track immediately, you run toward the train. Why do you risk your life this way? When you notice the train, you're on a bridge. You can't leave the track right away and have to run to the closest place where you can do it. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip. And, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Mm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-19.4-1.2 and 13.3-1.2-6.3 Dash 9.1. Yours truly, the riddling man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. He immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined Mark words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note, and the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why? Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one. So the footage on the first monitor is fake. The footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room. But it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage. So it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh, yes. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the riddling man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. 
Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, you'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? Hmm. To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night, and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth, and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too? The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Hmm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas. And on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. 
Then, he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. Oh no! Someone broke into Monsieur Dupont's house, broke into his home office, and stole some important things from his safe. Here are two photos of the safe before and after the theft. Will you be able to find five things that the criminal stole? They stole a wad of cash, a ticket to Lyon, and an expensive watch, a necklace, and a gold statuette. Unfortunately for the thief, Gabriel Dupont is actually a retired detective. What a great way to remember the old days! Gabriel decides to examine the house and look for possible traces of the criminal. Do you see anything suspicious in this picture? There are boot marks on the floor. The size is quite large. These are, most likely, the footprints of a man's shoes. Now let's go to the hallway where the footprints lead. Do you see anything suspicious here? There are shards of glass on the floor. It's strange because none of the windows seem to be broken. Could the thief have shattered something that belonged to him? The criminal entered the house through the window. Gabriel decides to explore the garden. Are there any traces there? It seems the criminal dropped his hat in a hurry. Now it's time to listen to witnesses. The day before, there were three people in the house. Gabriel's wife, Chloe, their maid, Mary, and the gardener, Adam. Each of them claims to have seen the criminal. But their stories differ dramatically. Chloe says, I was walking along the corridor and noticed a shadow in the garden. It was a man with long brown hair. He ran away as soon as he saw me, so I thought he was just passing by. Mary says, I was going to the second floor and noticed the shadow. It was a tall man wearing glasses, and I think he was bald. He noticed me and slipped through the window. It looked as if he dropped something when he was running away. I immediately called you, Monsieur Dupont. And Adam says, I was planting flowers in the garden. At one point, I looked up and saw a shadow in the hallway. It was a woman. She was tall, with curly hair. I started running towards the house, but when I arrived, she was already gone. Who is right? Mary. It looks like Adam just saw Chloe, and Chloe spotted Adam, but they didn't recognize each other. 
As for Mary, she thought that the man had been bald because he'd had a hat on. She also said that she'd been wearing glasses. That's where the shards came from. Gabriel asks Mary for more details. She draws a portrait of the thief, a middle-aged man wearing a hat and glasses. The criminal stole tickets to Lyon, so Gabriel decides to go there. He takes a bus to the airport. On his way, he makes a decision to brush up on his detective skills. Which of the passengers doesn't have a ticket? The baby in that woman's arms. Gabriel boards the plane and decides to practice again. Which of the passengers is married? The girl with a ring on her finger. Gabriel arrives in Lyon. He comes to the hotel to ask about the criminal and is now waiting for his turn to speak to the receptionist. While he's waiting, can you guess which of these people is not a tourist? This man. He's the only one who doesn't have a suitcase. Neither does he have any souvenirs with him. Finally, it's Gabriel's turn. He comes up to the receptionist. Hello, he says. I'm a detective investigating crime. Could you please provide me with the footage from your security camera for the past few days? Of course, detective. But could you please help me to solve another crime first? I think my dog has stolen some of my papers. Can you help the receptionist find the dog? Here it is. The dog is hiding under the stairs in the hall. Gabriel has received the footage from the cameras for the last four days. Can you find the suspects in these photos? Here he is. On the first day, he arrived wearing glasses, but without a hat. But look, a couple of days later, he got a new hat and an expensive suit. That's the man I need, Gabriel says, showing the man in the photos. Oh, I know him, the receptionist replies. He's usually absent at night and returns only in the morning, at around 10 o'clock. Gabriel decides to check in at that hotel and wait for the suspect to return. After taking his things to his room, he sits down to solve a few logic puzzles before going to bed. The first one is easy. Here it is. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges and shared them. Everyone got a whole orange. How is it possible? There were three people, a grandpa, a dad, and a son. The second puzzle is harder, but Gabriel still solves it easily. Can you? A woman needs to bake six pies. How can she do that in 15 minutes if maximum four pies can be placed in a pan and one pie needs to be baked for five minutes on each side? Step 1. We put four pies in a pan and bake them for five minutes. Step 2. We turn over two pies, remove the other two, Put two new pies and bake them for another five minutes. Step 3. We remove the two finished pies, turn the other two over, put the two half-cooked pies from the first batch, and bake them for five minutes. The task is done. The last riddle has a catch. It goes like this. A deaf and mute man entered a store to buy a pencil sharpener. He placed his index finger in his left ear and made a rotational movement near his right ear with the other hand. The seller immediately understood what the man wanted. Sometime later, a blind man entered the same store. How did he explain to the seller that he wanted to buy scissors? He just said it aloud. He was blind, not mute. In the morning, the detective wakes up and goes downstairs to wait for the suspect and he indeed comes in at 10.15 a.m. 
It's a middle-aged man wearing glasses. He looks at his watch and says, Oh no, I have to hurry. I'm already 15 minutes late. Gabriel immediately jumps up. It's you. You're the thief who robbed me. How did Gabriel understand that? The watch the suspect was looking at was the one that once belonged to Gabriel. No, wait, I... The man says, backing away, and then, suddenly, he dashes away. Oh no! Gabriel starts running after him, but the man has already managed to hide somewhere. He must have chosen one of these three ways to escape. There is a police car blocking this road. The second road leads to an alley. So dark that you can see nothing. The third road is blocked by a big crowd of people. Think! Which way did the culprit choose? He probably picked the third road. Of course, he wouldn't run towards the police. It'd also be very dangerous for him to run in the dark. What if he tripped over, fell down, and got caught? So, he chose the crowd to blend in with. Gabriel notices the criminal in the crowd. He runs after him, but the man disappears around the corner. Gabriel follows him. On the left, he sees the central square of the city. There's a cafe in the center. On the right, he spots a road leading to the park. Which way did the criminal most likely choose? The one leading to the central square, of course. There are not so many people in the park. The culprit would look suspicious running along a deserted path. And if he took a seat in the cafe, the detective would immediately spot him. Finally, Gabriel reaches the square. While he was running, he managed to request police assistance. Now he needs to find everyone who looks like the culprit before the man escapes. Can you find five possible suspects? Here they are. These are all men in hats and glasses. The police grab the suspects and take them to the police station for questioning. They all look very similar. Unfortunately, the criminal has already managed to hide the watch. So, Gabriel has to find another way to identify him. Who is the thief? This man, he has the same wart on his nose as the thief did. Gabriel recognizes the criminal. His real name is Charles Winston. I didn't do anything. He claims, I started running away because I was scared, and you have no proof that I'm a criminal. Really? Gabriel suggests that the police should examine the criminal's room in the lobby. They find a safe there. The password is a four-letter word. There's also a hint next to the safe. 7, 15, 12, 4. Can you figure out the code? The password is gold. The numbers correspond to the ordinal numbers of these letters in the alphabet. In the safe, there's Gabriel's gold statuette. Unfortunately, this is all they find. The criminal managed to sell the rest. But what matters the most for Gabriel is that justice has prevailed. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel, so Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. 
Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. It's Friday and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail. It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta oh no. took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife, so Luke can give it back to her? It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit?
It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth! There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel, and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda oh, no. was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. When she woke up on Sunday, all the oh, ice cream no. was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house, but he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. The robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6, in turn, has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. Well, you can see by now that the robber should have said 3. Looks like he wasn't as brilliant as he thought. 